Hello, everybody, and welcome back to, I think, our final date with Colonel Sanders. Ah, if we go to load, game, yeah, yeah, we've made it through all eight of the first bites. We got nine and ten, the final bite left. Ah, I'm a little sad. I'm a little sad, but... You know, all good things have to come to an end. So, our... <laughs> See, I don't even know if I want to end up with the colonel anymore because he was really weird on that date. Our, our weird sleepover date. So, um... Yeah, we ate coleslaw and we talked a lot. Let's see what else is going to happen. Let's see. I have no idea. Last time I stuck my hand in a hand mixer, so... Let's see if anything else horrible happens. Oh yeah, and I have no eyebrows left. This, that was a terrible day. That was a bad day. Let's make this day better. All right, so we've already done this. Let's just get through this quickly. We already... Uh, oh yeah, and the game definitely uh, decided to say that we told the secret ingredient to Miriam when we definitely didn't. Uh, I have video proof that we told her it was Eye of Newt and not whatever the other secret blank ingredient was. So... Uh, I'm already kind of mad at this game. Let's see if we can salvage what is left. Alright, I think, yeah, we learned about the blank ingredient. Okay, yeah, we already, we did all this. We made us breakfast. Ooh, alright, you know what? Um, I'm gonna, I guess I have to follow what I did last time. Let's keep with the game. We'll flatter him. Ah, uh, yeah, single tier. Yeah, we shouldn't have done that. We should probably tell him off. <laughs> I don't want to be his business partner. He is a weird zombie. He has been alive for many, many moons. Way longer than I have been alive or will continue to be alive. He might be a vampire. Ah, uh, he likes chicken and not brains. Um, okay. So let's uh, get through Miriam. There we go. She had a night. Desperate to talk to us. Couldn't find us because we had that weird ass coleslaw sleepover. I don't know if we should tell Miriam about it. Miriam seems like a, not a great friend. And she seems to have really shady other friends. So maybe we should just, you know, quietly stop talking to Miriam. All right, so now we're finally gonna get sped up on the saga of Miriam. How exciting. Can we, uh, sure, but you will not believe what happened to me after school yesterday. I went on a date. I think I can believe that. Since I'd been partnered up with Clank, he asked me to go out with him. Okay, you know what? I super ship her and Clank, so maybe she can stick around. Of course, I told him you'd better keep your dials turned to polite and respectful. I'm not that kind of girl. Anyway, he was just interested in spending some one-on-one -on -one time together and getting to know me. So I said, yeah, sure, I can get to know the little metallic guy. All right, Miriam. Long story short, he took me skydiving with his friends, but things quickly spiraled out of control. I hope not literally in the air. Did she just say skydiving? Is if that's a typical first date to go on with a talking pressure cooker? All right, why are we insulting Clank? It's being very mean. <laughs> and now I'm not really sure where we stand. I... You, uh, uh, you don't give Miriam time to tell her whole story, however. Bottling up the details of your own night is just too much to bear. Uh, we could bottle it more. And I went on a date, too. Back to Colonel Sanders' house where I spent the night with him. Oh, scandal. Yeah, you what? Nothing happened, but the emotional connection. Wowzers. Oh my gosh, we're go-go gadgeting now. Miriam tells you to move on from this whole Colonel Sanders obsession and focus on school. That is the only option. If being obsessed with Colonel Sanders is wrong, you don't want to be right. Oh, we've lost it. We've lost it. We've fallen hard. After a short argument, you both agree to go your separate ways. You know what? Not a big loss. Not a big loss. When you arrive at school, you encounter your rivals in the quad. Yeah, knockoff Team Rocket. It's like Wish Team Rocket. Although, Bam Bam's hair. You can, uh, I hate you, Pop. I hate 
Ugh. You can tell from a distance that they're picking on Pop, though he himself might not quite grasp that fact. Let them continue. Can we just walk away from all of them? Oh, oh look at her chicken tights. Kind of like those chicken tights. Ah, because you know he's Pop. Ah, what's that swirly? It sounds delicious. Oh, it's great. I'll order you up one right away. Oh, yeah. Not Bam Bam. <laughs> Van Van. I'll have my swirly with sprinkles, please. Sprinkles is a dog and a treat. Oh, why are we talking to any of these people? I hate this so much. You can get your swirly dip, too. Why don't you pick on someone your own size? Because I'm literally the biggest person at this school. I mean, he has a point. There's not really anybody he can pick on. There is that horse that Colonel Sanders rides to school, but who would dare pick on such a gentle and beautiful creature? I mean, right? Ugh. You have some nerve, Lady Vandy, suggesting I pick on a defenseless horse. Wow. Wow. Now you're twisting my words and I won't have it. Oh, wow. Okay, this is a day already. <laughs> You clench your fists, but the injury from yesterday's mixer accident makes you wince with pain. Oh, yeah. Okay, it's still there. <laughs> Doesn't look like you can go on cooking like that. Might as well just give up. Yeah, he might be right. I'll never give up, ever. I mean, that. <laughs> Colonel Sanders arrives just as it appears things are close to boiling over. A naturally intuitive person, he senses that something has been going on. Really? Me screaming? That had nothing to do with that? Great. It's your intuition. Is everyone excited for the final day of school? Lady Vandy, how's that hand feeling? I'm sure you'll be back in fighting form by this afternoon. Yeah, I heal as fast as Wolverine. Uh -huh. Aren't you concerned about my hands, Colonel? Yesterday, I almost broke a nail winning so hard. <laughs> uh -oh. <laughs> Points, Ashley. <laughs> Technically, I don't believe a winner was decided, but you're per presentation was quite impressive what is he doing complimenting her hmm. <sighs> but what about the flavor of my delicate warm gooey chocolate sauce mm -hmm. it was clear that you're passionate about how your food is received <laughs> that's a lot of words to say it was bland okay we need to stop talking Excuse me, Lady Vandy. I am more than capable enough for s to speak for myself. Wow. Ugh. Can we just can we just go to class, please? <gasps> if you could tell me more of your thoughts as we walk into class, Colonel. I'm always interested in discussing the fine art of fine foods. Colonel is a jerk. Let's go to class. See you inside, Lady Vandy. Annoyed by Colonel Sanders' inability to see Ashley for who you know she really is. You walk across the quad to get some distance. Yeah, let's just take the horse and get out of here. In an attempt to distract yourself from how slighted you feel by that interaction with Ashley, you take out the spell book you recovered yesterday and start flipping through the pages. Ooh, yeah, let's cast some curses on people. Let's curse them all. Whoa, that's the book. It looks like bad news. Where did you come from, Miriam? I thought we went our separate ways. Oh, we're just talking. Oh, okay. It's just something I found lying around. It would appear to be some sort of grimoire, but I don't really believe in that magic stuff. Yeah, 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 we do. A grimoire? Like a book of spells? I don't know. Who would spend so much time decorating a magic book if it weren't really powerful? Oh, why are we still talking to Miriam? I can think of one surefire way to find out. Yeah, let's cast some spells, starting with you, Miriam. You open a page covered with arcane writing warnings. Cast only in case of extreme emergency. It says around the edge of the page. In a language we can apparently read. I could use this spell here that says it will erase anyone I choose from all of my memories. If I scrub out Colonel Sanders, it would probably help me focus better on the upcoming final exam. Ooh, we're going to play an internal sunshine of the spotless mind. I like it. This is way drastic. Couldn't you do something else, like anything else, not rooted in dark magic? Maybe tie a string around your finger? I should just forget all of these people. Let's just forget this whole experience. <laughs> okay, fine. It is drastic, but desperate times call for desperate measures. You've got a memory erasing spell sitting right in front of you and a pretty good excuse to try it out. Pass the forbidden spell. Don't do it after all. 
Ha. Huh. Hmm. I really want to cast this spell. I want to... Yeah, let's cast it. You begin to recite the spell, but you stumble on the words, and the only effect it seems to have is make you forget what it is you were doing. Sigh. Oh, right. After looking at the page again, it comes rushing back to you. You've got a memory-raising spell sitting right in front of you and a pretty good excuse to try it out. Something about this moment feels very familiar. Cast the forbidden spell. Oh, no. We're stuck in an endless loop. Guess we have to not cast the spell. <laughs> oh, I take my... She's not my friend anymore. We had a falling out. You take your friend's advice, put the book away. It's almost time for class. Sprinkles is all... I, apparently, I, that's the only thing I forgot. I forgot that Miriam and I are no longer friends. That's the only thing I forgot. Sprinkles is already in the room, waiting for the students to arrive. He clears his voice to make a quick announcement. I want you all to know. I feel something of a dog moment coming on. But I assure you, it's nothing to be afraid of. His cute little nose scrunches up and he begins to breathe quickly. Um... You must be hungry. Reach for some old homework to give him as a snack. That must be rather unpredictable, especially sprinkles. Wait to see what happens. No, we'll give him some f homework. Oh, he did not like that. You reach into your backpack and grab some homework from last semester that you forgot to turn in. Oh, sprinkles immediately goes for it and gobbles the sheet of paper like it's a piece of fresh chicken rawhide. <laughs> um, I apologize for the outburst. I know it seems cliche, but not much in this world satisfies like ungraded work. My, my, Lady Vandy, were you studying something with cinnamon? Okay, so I guess that was the right thing to do. This is a weird, weird dog. It's a weird dog. I have been sitting uh, in on a lecture series around the art of cake baking. How insightful. Oh, have I? Great. This actually brings up an important point. Thank you, Lady Vandy, for reminding me to dole out this indispensable bit of wisdom, you see. But before I can go any further, Miriam's love drama spills over into the class. Oh, no. Ah, uh, Sprinkles is interrupted by words and sparks coming from the back of the room. I told you to save it for after class. <laughs> oh, no. Don't make Clay cry. Miriam, you're the devil. Think I wanted to be thrown from a plane strapped to a stranger? Well, you agreed to it and you probably signed a waiver, Miriam. Miriam and Clank appear to be arguing, but you still haven't learned to speak Clank's language of mechanical noises. I should probably learn that. Were. But no, you had to show off to your cool kid friends, Jeff and Joan. Jay and Jay forever. Watch us form a triangle in midair as we descend. Ah, <laughs> yeah, he's like, yeah, we did. That was awesome. Triangles are the strongest shape, don't you know? Yeah, that's right. <laughs> yeah, well, that doesn't make it a great date. Beep, were. Then take Jeff and Joan with you. You can all hold hands and you pedal down the mountain or off a cliff for all I care. Yeah, you're better off without Miriam Clank. Go hang out with Jeff and Joan. They sound awesome. Clank begins to shudder. Steam pours out of the gaps in his panels and then a loud ding stops him in his tracks. Oh, did he cook something? Beep. No amount of seasoning is going to make me want to eat that, Clank. Clank burps out a completely deep-fried sneaker. Considering that he himself has wheels, not feet, it's not entirely clear where it came from. Ooh, I hope he eats people. In terms of deep-fried footwear, I guess it looks okay. Yeah, I bet Sprinkles would be all about that. Aw, Clank slowly rolls out of the room to be alone with his shoe. Everyone tries to pretend like they didn't see the entire thing go down. Nothing like a loud public breakup to cast a pall over the final day of school. How come we can't kick Miriam out too? Well, that was unfortunate. But we mustn't distract from what lies ahead. The final competition showdown challenge exam. Yeah. I'm still working on that title, but I think you get it. Test time approaches. See you all in the arena. 
Before you can think about your upcoming competition, there's a very beautiful soul nearby in need of a pep talk. No! A very beautiful soul? Are you freaking kidding? Hey, Miriam, are you okay? Uh. Okay, I'm so mad I could smash a tiny mug spilling several droplets of hot cocoa all over the floor. How could he embarrass me in class like that in front of everyone? Her tiny cocoa is a delicious treasure, so you know that this breakup is no joke. But even if the source of her frustration is such a silly bo What is this game even? I know that you know this, but I'm going to say it out loud. You don't need anyone. Me and you. We're going to cruise through this final test and hit the carpool lane to success city. Oh my god. Stop hanging out with Miriam. Miriam brightens up, imagining the wind rushing through her short bangs, but she hesitates to embrace the feeling all the way. <laughs> You're not going to saddle up on Colonel Sanders' stallion and ride off into the sunset without me. Yes, I think I should do exactly that. Of course not. Well, maybe. Sorta. Yeah, we're definitely going to do that. But I'm sure there's a pony out there with your name on it and a ranch big enough for both of us and whoever else we want to bring along. This is just... Uh, stop talking. Uh, if it's not Pop or Clank or anyone else you meet today, tomorrow, or this whole year, so what? You're a special person. You shouldn't settle for the first someone to show a little interest anyhow. Miriam gives you a big hug and wipes tears from her cheeks. I should really review my menu for today. I'm going to make a very special soup. And I bet that Professor Dog is going to love it up. Well, you were pa pep talking, Miriam. You completely missed lunch, but that's okay because you had a better idea of how to spend the time before your exam. It's not okay that we missed lunch. I'm hungry. You've decided to head to the arena early to practice a dish. This is it. The location of your final challenge. A test of will. A test of courage. A test of talent. And a chance to beat the pants off of Van Van, the supposed man-man, and his evil -er counterpart, Ashley. As planned, you begin to run through a quick test of a recipe you've been working on. Lady Vandy's famous chicken pot pie. After practicing for months, making this dish comes second nature to you, and you're able to quickly get a fresh pot pie in the oven. But as soon as you do... Your cram session is interrupted by Colonel Sanders! Lady Vandy, what are you doing here? There's still time before the final exam. Oh, just taking it all in. I'm big into visualizing success. I'm looking at my station and picturing victory. The pot pie has begun to bake and the smell is slowly filling the space around you. Hmm. Visualizing, huh? That's too bad. I was hoping you were here cooking something delicious. Heh <laughs> You'd usually happily share your food with anyone who is hungry, but the last time you let Colonel Sanders get in your head, it cost you a cook-off. Yeah, that's tr very true. You decide that it's time to put your cooking above your romantic desires, but that decision gets hard to stick to when... The oven timer goes off behind you. Ignore it. Like, there was no sound at all. Fess up about your practice dish. Okay, okay, you got me. Doing a little bit more than visualizing. I know, my nose can smell a pot pie from 400 yards. That's an oddly specific distance, but you'd expect nothing less from such an oddly specific man. You knew it was a pot pie just from the smell? Not just a pot pie, but a chicken pot pie with an all butter crust. And my nose is telling me something else. Oh no, is it burning? <laughs> no, I can smell that it was made with a heaping helping of TLC. Ew. But it'll probably start burning any second if you don't pull it out. The moment of truth. Who ate it already? Wow. <gasps> it's the best pot pie I've ever tasted. Why did we... Did, did we just give it to him to taste? I don't remember giving you permission, Colonel. Ah, uh, I hope you burned your mouth. I've always loved country cooking, and I could eat this all day. There's no time left. The final showdown is about to begin. Sprinkles lays down the ground rules. Oh my gosh. There are no rules. That is except to cook with everything you've got. Wow, this is terrifying all of a sudden. 
Oh my gosh, this music! Okay, you step up for the cook-off of a lifetime! You decide that mac and cheese plus the pot pie you've been practicing are just the dishes that'll push you over the edge to victory. Ah, <sighs> meanwhile, both Van Van and Ashley are prepping wildly elaborate dishes. Oh, I click too soon! Miriam and her giant magnifying glass had several sets of tweezers. She's definitely prepared to go big going small. This is chaos. Colonel Sanders seems to be harnessing the 11 herbs and spices, but he's trying to find a way to improve on something perfect. His original recipe fried chicken! Man, that's all he makes. That's all he does. The intensity in the room starts at a full 10 out of 10 with a frenzy of action. Everyone is calling out really cool special cooking moves as they prepare their food. Wow, this is getting serious. Colonel Sanders battered his chicken as it levitates through the air. Egg wash. Miriam furiously injects ingredients into an itty bitty pot of broth. Best friend. Faster blaster. Oh no. Finn Van flexes his pectorals as he chops open a sea urchin. Let's rock and roid. Uh, I'm just gonna go with it. Ashley scoops her pastries off the tray with lightning speed. Shallow personality spatula! My favorite kind of spatula. Even Clank gets in on it. Oh good, I'm glad he's still around. Five dial pressure point chicken cooking technique! Wow, serious. Wait, when did Clank learn to speak English? <gasps> it's a singularity as was foretold. As was foretold. <gasps> we mustn't let it happen or the appliance uprising will take us all. Uh, uh, uh. self -destru No. Uh, uh, but. Fan Man quickly unplugs Clank and rolls him out the back door of the arena. As you frantically prepare your dish and notice Ashley has her spell book out. Is she going to use some dark magic to turn the tide? Hopefully she tries the forgetful spell. You've got a book of your own, and you're desperate not to see her win another battle. Should you tr take this opportunity to fight magic with magic? Even if it's almost certainly evil magic? You know what? Last time it wouldn't let us cast a spell at all, so we're just going to do it the hard way. Who needs magic when you've got passion? I'm going to do it the hard way. <laughs> Said with conviction. Colonel Sanders sees that you've chosen to win on your own terms and he gives you a subtle wink from across the room. Stop looking at him. I believe in you, Lady Vandy. Miriam notices too. What? We don't. Aww. And I've always believed in you, Lady Vandy, since we were little kids because I'm your best friend forever. Ugh. You turn to notice that Miriam is at your station cheering for you. What about Miriam? Are you not going to pass, Miriam? Are you going to fail? Miriam, what about your dish? If you're here cheering, who is cooking? Tiny food, short time, short cook time. I'm actually already done, so I thought I'd help you. Oh, that's sweet, but... That's cheating! Miriam tosses a handful of spices directly into your boiling noodles. Um, is she sabotaging us right now? Uh-huh. It's this... Oh, no. It's the secret ingredient. Great, she just threw a bunch of Eye of Newt. Um, the boiling pot explodes, sending Miriam flying backwards because she's the worst. And we hate her, and I thought we had a falling out, and apparently we did not. The watery noodles begin to swirl in the air. Bubbling up into a dark cloud that thickens and congeals before your eyes. I... I do What... What even is life? Oh my god, it is I, Steve the Spork Monster. Who's apparently made of congealed mac and cheese and Eye of Newt. Good to know. Uh, Steve, wait, what happened to Bor- Yeah, wait, what happened to Borco? <laughs> You're not here to battle me, are you? Uh, we spork monsters are many. I think Borco had the day off, but you have conjured Steve, and I hate to battle, so I'd say you're doing pretty alright. Excellent. Great. Nice to meet you, Steve. 
Oh, hey, you're in the middle of a cooking competition. I love this stuff. It's better than TV. You crazy kids and your cl culinary skills really impress me. Mind if I hang out? I'm sorry, Steve, but I'm kind of in the middle of something. Do you mind? I think I should automatically pass for conjuring a spark monster. Just my opinion, I guess, but... Steve the spark monster notices that you've got the grimoire stash beneath your cooking station. I see what you're up to. Crisscrossed some magical items and accidentally summoned me, huh? Ah, yeah, you guessed it, sort of. No, Miriam threw fuck... Anyway, if you're here, would you mind tossing some fresh noodles in a pot of salted water? I'd love to. I've always wanted to be a top chef, actually, you know, and I was just a little spork pup back in old country. Um, you can feel Spork Monster winding up to tell a very long and involved story. You don't know exactly where they came from, but it seems like it was probably lonely there. Uh, hey. Hey. Actually, you know what? Maybe you should watch from the stands. I really need to focus on this competition. <laughs> I understand. It's kind of like that time in monster school that I had fallen asleep during scare tactic class and when I woke up... You toss a serious stare at Steve and he takes the hint. Never mind. I'll tell you later. Good luck. Having suffered this huge setback, you don't know how you could ever win. Um... I mean, we've got Steve, the spark monster cheering us now. We've got this amazing rock music. Um, how about we just, yeah. I can do this. I have what it takes. I came here to win. Your hair turns mac and cheese orange as culinary energy flows through your body. All right. My heart is pure. My hands are steady. My taste buds have been preparing their entire lives for... Oh, there's a ghost. Yes, Lady Vandy, you are the chosen one. You will avenge me. All right, ghost of student. The power you've been summoning immediately fades back out. Oh, no, why? You interrupted my inspiring monologue. Sorry. My heart is pure. My hands are steady. My taste buds have been, have been preparing their entire lives for this moment. I will show the world my cookery. Yeah, rock. You begin to levitate off of the ground. Energy courses through your body. You know that with this power, you can do anything. But all you have to do is make mac and cheese and a pot pie. So let's just get it done. Except turn back time, which would be super useful. Because while you were powering up, your chicken pot pie overcooked in the oven and can't be served. We should have just dropped out. But don't worry, dear Lady Bandy, you may have suffered some setbacks, but all is not lost. Impressed with your fortitude, Colonel Sanders decides that you have earned his support. I've been watching you today, and I must say I'm truly impressed. You've been thinking on your feet and rolling with the punches. He steps up to your station and stands right beside you. I'm here to help. All you've managed to make is mac and cheese, and time is almost up, so you are going to need it. But Colonel Sanders, what about the test? What will happen to you? What about the rules? Following the rules has never really been my thing. I follow my heart. What a guy. Colonel Sanders unfolds a delicate white towel to reveal the most delicious fried chicken tenders you have ever laid your eyes on. And besides, sometimes unexpected combinations can have surprising effects that surpass their individual efforts. Are you suggesting if we combine forces, we can form the perfect food union? Oh, wow. Too late. Time's up, students. With time expired, it's the moment everyone has been waiting for. You must now prepare to present your dishes. A handful of students stand tall, but the class seems incomplete. It seems we're missing some students, Pop, Clank. From off screen, you hear a pure and innocent giggle that can only come from one student. 
Hee hee, I'm flying! Sounds like it's coming from that broom closet over there. Good, leave him. Leave him there. Miriam, would you mind? No. How about they both just go in the broom closet? Inside of the closet, you can see Pop hanging on a broom hook by the elastic of his underpants. Pop, get down from there right now. Let me guess, did Van Van have something to do with this? When someone asked for a wedgie, who am I to refuse? I thought a wedgie was a salad. Looks like Pop is eliminated from the challenge, seeing how he didn't cook anything. I can't feel my legs. May I be excused? Sure. Ah, oh, you kids and your pranks, I must say. It's not the worst prank in UCSAL history, but it's not exactly yearbook material. Wait a second. Pranks, pranks, clank. Where did that pressure cooker roll off to? Why is everybody so mean to clank? You wait to hear a signature whir, beep, or other onomatopoeia, but there's none. Somehow, he must have gotten unplugged. I guess we'll have to figure that out later. Yeah, remember? Van Van unplugged him and rolled him outside because apparently he was going to self-destruct. Where, where were you? That leaves only four remaining students. Please collect your final product projects. Yes, it has been a long semester. A whole three days. <laughs> wow, three whole days long. But after days of hard work, the time has come for me to eat. Miriam, please step forward. Now describe your dish. I've made tender udon noodles and savory soup. My word, it's so delicate. It's Is that a teeny tiny... Narutumak, I spy a float in this itsy bitsy bowl? Yes, chef. Please call me Sprinkles. Chef is my father's name. Yes, Sprinkles, and some green tea made from baby tea leaves that I picked myself. Sprinkles carefully sniffs around the dish before opening his mouth and letting just the tip of his pink dog nose dip into the bowl. Sublime, would anyone else like a taste? Ew, no. Oh, come on, I'm not one of those dogs who doesn't floss. I even have a really cute electric toothbrush for dogs. Fine, I'll enjoy it all by myself. And in a flash, the entire meal has been devoured. Not that it took much. It was less than a thimble's worth of soup. A plus. Rarely do I taste a dish with as much love poured into it as yours. Miriam is overjoyed. She gives you a huge hug. Thank you, Lady Vandy, for helping me to believe in myself. Oh, I wish we hadn't. Van Van, you're up. Now describe your dish. I made uni over smooth egg custard and an axe hewn urchin shell topped with caviar. Oh, so fancy, so spiky. Did you skewer one type of urchin with spines from a second different colored type of urchin? Yes, Sprinkles. Bit much, don't you think? That's exactly why I did it. A bit much is my kind of brand. Doesn't it look cool? Sprinkles leans in to sniff the uni, but he can't get his nose close on account of all the spikes. He begins to paw at it erratically, causing the custard to slosh around. Woof woof. Please be gentle with my cuisine. Grrr. Finally, Sprinkles goes all in, tongue first, but he can't get past all the needles. He reels back as his tongue is poked and prodded. Youch, my tongue! Professor appears to be having an allergic reaction to the sting. Oh no. I can't eat this. It keeps poking my tongue. Disqualified. A stunning turn of events. Who would have thought that serving food in a bowl made of needles would make it difficult to eat? Dejected Van Van does not go gentle into the night. Disqualified for glamour. Don't discount the right. Hey, um, Thinthly? This isn't the last you've heard of me! Before forcing us to endure his swollen tongue for another moment, Sprinkles graciously laps up a bowl of milk. I know, I know, yeah, I'm a dog and I drink milk, get over it. Sometimes it helps calm my agitated tongue. Wow, okay. Next student, Ashley, it's time to step up. Now describe your dish. I made... Orange Blossom Turkish Delight 
in a light rose water syrup topped with French meringue and connected by sugar glass. All right. That actually doesn't sound too bad. Indeed, it's quite delightful. However, I'd ask that you please refrain from eating it or attempting to taste it in any way. It is very fragile and meant to be a display piece. Don't eat the food at a cooking school? Got toast in your ears or something, Lady Vandy? I told you, it's a display piece. Actually, I must say, it is beautiful. However, this is a cooking competition at a cooking school. Yeah, which is why I cooked it and did an extremely good job cooking it, too. I didn't realize that we were having an eating exam. I want to be judged on eating. I go to the College of Eating School for the Hungry. Burn. <laughs> I suppose you could smell it if you absolutely insisted, but don't breathe too hard. You might disrupt the sugar spiral. The food cannot be eaten. It cannot be judged. You are disqualified. Rage overtakes Ashley and she finally cannot keep her two-faced routine up. You wouldn't know high-end cuisine if it cooked you. And with that, Ashley storms off to rededicate herself to being the best, but this time without being shackled by trying to be fake nice and liked by everyone. Oh, she's going full villain. I love it. This isn't the last you've heard of me either. Full villain, Ashley. If this class gets much smaller, I'll be teaching myself. You and Colonel Sanders, the final cook, step up together. Two chefs? What began as a bowl of delicious mac and cheese has become something else. He examines it closely, sniffing and eyeing the bowl. Oh, I don't have a good feeling about this. From somewhere in the room, a literal drum roll plays. Just when I thought I've seen everything in this kitchen, you give me this, this thing and completely blow me away. In my 49 dog years of life, I have never tasted anything so delicious and perfectly balanced. It's so delicious, in fact, that everyone passes the class. I, I, I hate the school. You pass, you pass, and you pass, and you get a pass. Everyone gathers around and partakes in the mac and cheese bowl. They all seem to transcend this reality into another dimension. You win. You win school. Together, you and Colonel Sanders have made a new menu item. The new menu item is so impressive, even the Van Van and Ashley are drawn to back in by its magnetic fragrance. Yeah, you can't go wrong with fried chicken and mac and cheese together. You really can't. When they gaze upon the mac and cheese bowl, they admit that you are indeed an excellent chef. Wow. Sprinkles declares that you have passed. Everyone has passed. There were supposed to be more battles, but come on. How could there be better than this one? Now that the school year is complete and everyone has graduated, the students return for one last assignment to get their groove on. <sighs> the cafeteria has been completely redecorated in order to serve as the site of the school's graduation dance. Compared to the massive high-tech cooking arena, the humble decor seems downright cute and cozy. DJ Dog is in the house! Ar Alright. You knew the Sprinkles was a master chef, but also a world-renowned turntablist? Who says you can't teach an old dog new tricks? Ah, uh, yeah, I guess he's 49 years old in dog years. Van Van and Ashley tell everyone that they've committed themselves to fighting the wrongs they did while they were villains. No, you're supposed to go full villain. For a moment, you actually believe them. Not another haunting. No ghost a lot of graduation. It's clearly written in the school's bylaws. I was never actually a ghost. It was all a trick to get you to finally notice me. Oh. Amusing. And now that everyone is together, it's a spork monster. He has totally mellowed out. Everyone, the spork monster is no more. From here out, I'd prefer that everyone refer to me by my new name, Party Monster. 
okay? Students try to finish what he has to say, but everyone is too wrapped up talking to Spork. Sorry, party monster. Dejected student walks off. Maybe things didn't work out for Miriam romantically, but she found the love in her cooking, and you know she's gonna do great. She's gonna go make tiny, tiny food for people. Uh, red carpet rolls out across the floor of the ballroom. It's like a Hollywood movie premiere. Who could command such an entrance? It's Pop. He's arrived late to the dance, but apparently for good reason. Walking the carpet, you see perched atop his dirty chef's hat. A crown? Welcome back, Pop. I know you weren't able to complete the final exam and accept your diploma. So we had it mailed directly to your father. We figured it was the least we could do for the school's dean. Oh, now I get it. And we get a new wing on the school. Not to mention the honor of educating the son of the chancellor of such and such. The music at the dance is interrupted by the sound of sparking and electrical hissing. It's Clank, who has arrived late to the dance. Now that I've graduated, I can reveal my truth. Whoa, he's doing the talking thing. I am Clank, and I am not of this earth. I am actually from a faraway planet in another dimension. What? What? Hmm. I actually feel like I knew it the whole time. Now that I have learned the ways of your kind, I must return. Miriam, will you come with me? Yes, yes, take her, take her. I don't know what to say. Say you'll go. Say you'll go. Besides, no, obviously. Ah, uh, I've just begun to learn who I really am. This isn't the time for me to devote my life to figuring out who you are, Clank. <sighs> You're blown away by Miriam's maturity. No, go to space, please. Go be an alien. It's pretty clear she has managed to surpass you in that rec Game? Game? These are fighting words, game. I'll fight you. Uh, I understand kind of. Humans are weird. No, just these humans, Clank. I mean, no, you're right. Humans are weird. But this game is also just really weird. A portal opens up and Clank disappears through it. Shove Miriam in there, too. Finally, Colonel Sanders arrives. Howdy, classmates? No. Just like the first day you met him, he has come prepared to feed the entire class. However, it's not enough to just give him them a bucket of chicken. This time, it's a full meal. Oh yeah, look at that. Nom nom. I didn't get to be the most famous chicken man in the history of chicken and man by not reminding people to go out and buy my chicken. The end? Please be the end. No, it's not the end! Ah, uh, psych. As everyone feeds on their delicious chicken dinner, Colonel Sanders finds you sitting at the edge of the dance floor. Lady Vandy, what are you doing sitting all alone? Oh, you know, just waiting for the right person to ask me to dance. I wonder, might you tell me what are the qualities that you would expect to find in such a lucky person? Off the top of my head, oh, I don't know, a spicy musk, a tidy goatee, and a degree from the University of Cooking School Academy for Learning, just to name a few. It truly is my lucky day. Would you dance with me? Yes, I would love to. You glide across the dance floor, hand in hand with Colonel Sanders. The future stretches out in front of you. And once my 100th franchise is up and running, I'll be ready to take a day off. And I'll be so glad to spend it together with you, Lady Vandy. Yep, just one single day. How sweet. We'll work together and play together. <laughs> Colonel Sanders stops dead in his tracks. Work together? Well, um, I think this is something I'll just need to do by myself. But who will help you run your restaurants? I don't believe I need help? Really? All this talk of business partners? Who was that about? Who was that about? Besides, based on your time at school here, do you think, really think running restaurants is the best path for... What? He's such a freaking jerk! Could it be you found a love connection but failed to earn Colonel Sanders' respect as a chef? 
Can you live with only half of him? Will you be able to endure sharing him with his other love, the life of an entrepreneur? I suppose I could enroll at pastry school. Oh, my dear Lady Vandy, I'm sure you'll find your place eventually. God, I hate him so much. <laughs> and along the way, you'll have me by, my, by your side. No! No, dump him! Dump him now! The end! Oh, I feel like we failed this game. I feel like I failed it hard. Although... I don't know what the other outcomes could possibly have been. So... I'm I'm just going to I'm going to we're going to leave it there. I'm going to leave it at that. Thank you so much for joining me for this three part finger licking good dating simulator. But it turns out Colonel Sanders is just this horrible. He's terrible. He gaslights us. He's lies. He deceives us. He's arrogant. Just you know what? We don't need we don't need him in our life. We are better off without him. And I hope, I hope Lady Vandy can, can see that. And I hope she ditches Miriam forever. Um, and honestly, if I could have chosen an outcome for this game, it would have been to go through the portal with Clank. So I will leave you on that note. Thank you so much for joining me. I hope you have a wonderful night. And I will catch you in the next video. Bye-bye. <laughs>